It is really, really good to be back. I hope you've had a really good holiday. Um, if you've been watching the videos all along, it's great to have you back. If you're new, it's great to have you. If this is your first video, you're joining a fantastic community. Um, we're going to do a bit of a recap on the different calculation skills that we've learned this week at the start of each video. And then we're going to look at data handling and looking at different kinds of graphs and how, how information is collected. Um, so today we're going to have a look at lots of different types of graphs. So this is one that actually shows my heart rate, um, a graph of that. And we're also, I'm going to tell you one of my favourite stories about tally charts. I bet not many people have stories about tally charts, but I've got a good one. So really looking forward to today and this week. So I'm going to take you back now to the very, very first video that we ever did. Uh, three consecutive numbers. Um, so 6 plus 7 plus 8, we figured it, it equals 21. But we actually saw it's actually the same as 3 lots of 7. Amazing. And of course, we have this realisation that if I look at 6 and 7 and 8, if I move 1 from the 8 and put it on the 6, I have 3 lots of 7. Now, I wanted to have a look at how can we play with numbers a little bit like that to help us to calculate. So let's say for 16 plus 17, you can add the tens and add the ones. It's not my favourite method though. For this one, if I have a look at this, I've got 16 and 17. My favourite thing actually is to break those, the 16 and the 17 down into two 15s. Double 15 is 30. And then I just need to think, well, how much more than 30 will it be? 33. So 19 plus 19 plus 18, again, I could add the 10s and add the 1s and put it all together. Uh, I could also look at that. So there I've got 19 and 19 and 18. My favourite thing there is to think, well, it's like 3 lots of 20. Uh, but how much less is it than 3 lots of 20? How much less than 60? Of course, it's 4 less. It must be 56. From these videos, I hope you're getting used to this idea. If you ever see a calculation, you can often think, well, how can I play around with it or do it in a different way or make it easier? So have a look at these calculations as examples. Are there any different ways you could find the answers? It might be you do it in more than one way now. Um, pause the video and have a think about these examples. All right, then let's have a look. Um, now, I'm going to give you some suggestions. It might well not be what you actually did. Um, let's say 39 plus 43. I think there I would just double 40. I think that's 80. And think, well, how much more will I need? That's one less. So if I put one from the three, the 43, then I make this one into a 40. And then I need another two here as well. So in total, it'll be 82. Now what about 9 plus 9 plus 8 plus 9? There, I think I would do uh, four lots of 9, then realise it's just got to be one less than 36. Now it might be you thought of doing four lots of 10. And thinking actually it'll be five lot less than that. And um, of course it's all good. Um, five plus five plus five plus seven. Maybe you did three lots of five and added the seven. Or you might have done uh, five times four and then added two. If this was a five, I'd have four fives. But it's not. It's two more. Now for 26 plus 28, my favourite thing there is actually to add two lots of 25. Uh, so that's 50. And then think, well, that that is one more than 25. This is three more than 25, so it must be four more than that 50. Okay, let's move on to these examples here. Um, so again, any different ways that you can do these calculations? Pause the video and let's have a look at these two. And then when you're ready, let's have a go again. Now, similarly, 25 plus 26 plus 27, I, I do three lots of 25 there, and then just add the three, one for the 26, it is one more than 25, and then two more uh, here as well. Um, 19 plus 19 plus 19 plus 23. I should just do four lots of 20. 20 times four. And then I imagine this three, I put one of them here, one of them here, one of them here, and that gives me my four 20s. Now, I hope you've, these videos have been really inspiring for you to see different ways that you can calculate and you've enjoyed playing around with numbers. We're going to move on though to playing around with graphs and thinking about different kinds of graphs and when they're used and why we've got different types and so on. Let's have a look at a few examples. So here, let's say a school where we're looking at the attendance for different school clubs. How many children go to the different school clubs? And I would then, I would group that information, I'd make it a, a bar graph. So I can see how many children there are that are going to these clubs. And I can 
And the information is put in groups. So you either go to the football club or we've got how many in netball club or how many in running club. There's not like an in-between running and band club. There's no in-between value there. We're we're in these different groups of the different numbers of people at the clubs. Um, And here's another one which I would use as a bar graph. Um, The percentage of trains arriving late at these different stations. Now, the trains will leave, in in this case, either from Leeds or Doncaster or York or Sheffield. There's no in-between here because we've only got these distinct stations. And so we group the information in that way. Whereas this is a graph from a run that I did recently. Um, I, I ran for about half an hour. And can you see that these are the bits where my heart rate increased? So that was where I was I was running as fast as I could. And this was the highest point it got to after 27 minutes and nine seconds, my heart rate got up to 172 beats a minute. Now here, my heart rate is gradually changing. It's not in groups, but over the course of time, it goes up slightly and down slightly. So a line graph is appropriate to show this kind of information. Now here's another example of how data is collected. Uh, Grace does a traffic survey to see which types of vehicles drive past school. Here are her results. Now, why did Grace use tally marks to record her results rather than numbers? When else would you use tally marks? Can you think of any examples? Pause the video. What are your thoughts on this one? Okay, let's have a look. Well, actually, if Grace used numbers to record the number of cars there were, she would be writing one and then two and then three and four and so on. And she's using marks because she doesn't know what the answer is yet. It's data that's collected over the course of time. Each time there's another car, she puts another mark down. And at the end, we know how many. Um, and so there'd be some times when we would use tally charts. If your teacher was saying how many children are on packed lunches and how many are on sandwiches, they wouldn't need to use tally marks because in that moment we know how many it is. But if we're collecting data over time, we would. Now, when else would you use tally marks? I once asked a teacher this question and I thought the, re- the answer they gave was absolutely fantastic. I said, Ask your children, are there any times when they when they would say we use tally marks? And a child in this teacher's class said, we use tally marks if our teacher ever takes break time off us um, because they do another little mark for each minute that we lose. And I thought, what a funny example. Not that I'm sure you would ever lose any of your break time. OK, let's have a look at this example. So for each example, should the data be presented as a bar graph or a line graph? Have a think about these examples. Types of pets owned by children in the class. Height of a sunflower measured over two weeks. Today's temperature measured every hour. And favourite fruit for each child in the year three class. A line graph or a bar graph and why? Pause the video. Okay, let's have a look. Well, types of pets owned by children in the class, that one would be a bar graph because we've got these, these separate groups of the different types of animals. The height of a sunflower over two weeks, so that increases gradually. So we'd put that in a line graph. And today's temperature measured every hour, that temperature might increase or decrease. So I think it's best to see the pattern for that one again in a line graph. Favourite fruit for each child in the year three class, though, that one would be a bar graph because we'd have these different groups depending on uh, which fruit was the favourite. OK, now your job is to look at these examples. That This is where this is the task that the class were given. So the table shows the puddings that 100 children ate at school. Mrs Yates asked her class to create a graph using this data. Now, they've done that, the examples are provided, and you're going to mark their work. So have a look at this graph. Um, Is this being presented well? What's been done well? Is there anything you would improve? Pause the video now and give your feedback on this graph. Okay, let's have a look. I, I, I thought this. The good things about it is we used a bar graph. That's the right kind of graph. It's clearly labelled, isn't it? So we can see um, which kind of pudding it was and how many children. And the bars have been marked unaccurately as well on those scales. But to improve, we don't need this scale to go all the way up to 100. Um, Because actually these bars are quite small here and it's quite hard to read them. So actually the scale only needs to go up to 50 because the the biggest group is 48 children who had the cake. So it doesn't really need to go beyond 50. What about this next one? Um, How well has this child done? What can they improve in their work? Pause the video here.
Well, I'll show you the feedback that I thought there was, well, the scale's just right up to 50. That's been done really well. And again, we've got these really clear groups. The points have been accurately marked on. But this one needs to be a bar graph. There's not an in-between value here for, because the children either had cake or they had yogurt. So this in-between value doesn't really have any meaning. So this one really needs to be in, in a bar graph. Okay. And how about this last example? What's been done well? Anything that could be improved. Pause the video. Well, I'll, I'll show you what my feedback was there. Use the bar graph, which is great. We've got a good scale. The numbers uh, are very clear to see there. The scale's been good and the, the bars are accurately plotted. But the scale just needs to be labelled as well. So for today's task, click on that blue link that's underneath the video. Um, and let me explain the tasks that we have. Task A, so the first part, which type of graph is best to show the height of a sunflower? Is it the one on the left or the one on the right? And again, which type of graph is, is best to show the eye colour of different children in the class? Is it this line graph on the left or is it the bar graph on the right? Then have a look at the example below. So these two graphs show how children travel to Minton Primary School. Now, which, it, and, and both show the same information. But have a look, what's the same, what's different, and which graph do you think is best of these two? Which is the best way to show this information? Now, if you want a slightly different challenge, you'll have a go at task B. Now, for task B, your job is to look at the headings and look at the graphs and see if you can match up which heading matches to which graph and how do you know? Uh, just like normal, the answers are at the bottom. And I'm going to see you again tomorrow. And it's been fantastic having you joining in again.